Recently, I've been thinking more deeply about memes and emojis and their roles in language exchange. More precisely, each language has its own internet culture. In my experience, my Latina and Italian friends tend to use more stickers or heart emojis than my Parisian friends. Moreover, few French people like to use emojis in conversations, at least the millennials I talk to. Instead, they prefer text emojis, which Wiki calls emotion icons, invented during the Nokia era, I suppose. I even asked some people why they don't use stickers or emojis. They said it's easier to type and also they're not sure what each emoji means, let alone stickers. French people have a different interpretation of certain emojis than Chinese people. It was a cultural shock for me at first. For example, this crying emoji is just a normal crying emoji on Chinese internet. But in France, people use it to express laughing my ass off, a more exaggerated version of LOL. My Russian friends like to use parentheses to indicate happiness or friendliness when used singly, or sometimes even playfulness or coquettishness. When used multiple times, they indicate laughter or extreme playfulness. One of my best friends, though, likes to use LOL for things that are funny but not excessively so, and reserves a specific emoji for hilarious stuff. For Chinese users, emojis are almost an obsolete language that only the older generation uses. We even have tacky and sarcastic stickers to mock this because they just use those emojis for their literal meaning. For example, as a millennial or Gen Z, we don't use the smiling emoji for friendly purposes as it's supposed to be used, simply because it looks sarcastic and intimidating. We only use it when we are mad or to react in a witty way to a situation where we think the person is being sarcastic. For example, if his bestie sent him this photo online, he can send this emoji as a response to express speechlessness and judgment. Chinese people have taken emojis to another level, and we've even invented some for our own use. If Tencent had conducted statistics a few years ago, this emoji must have been the most used one, expressing speechlessness and helplessness. A year or two back, they also recognized their users' prominent need to use the dodge emoji to express a witty and joking attitude. You can always add this emoji at the end of your sentence to reduce the seriousness, essentially saying, I'm joking. Most Chinese people on the internet use this to avoid trouble when speaking harsh truths. And of course, it can also convey sarcasm. Typically, people respond to certain comments with, you must have forgotten to add the dodge emoji, right? To express, bro, you can't be serious. Now let's talk about stickers or GIFs. In Chinese culture, people's need to express themselves through stickers is so prominent that Tencent upgraded its user sticker pack size to unlimited. Before this, we had to delete certain stickers to accommodate new ones. If the person has a kawaii style, they tend to use more cute stickers, normally illustrated animals or small kids that they find aesthetically appealing. I've seen a lot of foreigners getting confused when the Chinese person they're talking to suddenly sends them stickers of little kids. They'd be like, what does this mean? Does this mean she wants to have baby with me? Dude, they're just trying to be cute. In real life, it's gonna be like this. Then comes another type of stickers, which are normally illustrated or from classic cartoons and movies. They typically depict commonly shared emotions facing certain situations, or as we say now, puff. For example, this one means a lot of things going on in your life, and this one means you are so tired. This one is actually an homage to a famous movie scene where the guy was sitting like this, and this posture has its own name, Ge Yu Tan. He's also famous for this sticker, which can mostly be understood as keep talking. But these memes are old now, old but classic. Chinese memes are evolving so fast that there are some Bilibili accounts that cover this specific topic to keep people updated. From one of my favorite cartoons, Tom and Jerry, this sticker means I have an idea, normally a bad one, and this means bravo but in a sarcastic way. This means woohoo, let's go! This means mohaha, and this means I'm playing hard to get. Sometimes we send a sticker to end the conversation gracefully. The sticker doesn't mean that I'm actually doing this or anything. Ça veut dire quoi? Bah, ça veut dire que je suis en train de faire ça. Faux! The examples go on and on. You see, these are things that text alone can't convey. 
And then there's another degree of stickers which you won't relate if you don't know the origin. <laughs> They normally originate from viral internet creators. These creators often gain popularity for their unique, sometimes incomprehensible style, which can include exaggerated behavior, nonsensical catchphrases, or chaotic performances. We have a term for this style, which is xiang, translated as abstraction. For example, Gao Ge is a popular internet personality known for his eccentric and humorous style. He rose to fame through short videos where he often shouts his signature catchphrase <laughs> also because Gao doesn't exist in normal Mandarin Chinese, which makes him even more unique and eccentric. You may say that we have Kabi Lame as the equivalent abstract creator from the West, who is known for his signature gesture and life hack mock videos. But I don't agree because he has a clear theme in comedy, an MVP as product. Whereas in Chinese abstraction, things are totally random, and the main factor that makes them viral is bizarreness and absurdity. Most recently, this Uyghur guy went viral for his not so perfect Chinese and his minion like talking and laughing sound. <laughs> He's also famous for this phrase because he used the Uyghur word order in Chinese, which is fun for Chinese ears. And he's also known for this phrase, Nahanhala, means that's already good. It all started from one of his followers asking him during a live stream, What should I do? My wife just ran away with another guy. And then he responded, <laughs> That's good already, which caught the audience off guard. And it became a meme later to express playfulness and eccentric attitude when responding. Another Uyghur guy explained later that actually this guy wanted to say, You deserved it but he was thinking in Uyghur while speaking Mandarin. So it's basically like how confusing and funny Google Translate can be to Chinese people or to English speakers. The abstraction can also be reflected in the stickers, which can be a combination of faceless panda man and celebrities' facial expressions. You can use the sticker to refuse to go to an expensive party. It's a funny contrast because this guy is one of the richest men in China, and the poor translation, of course, makes it even funnier. There are also some memes and stickers that are shared between the East and the West. Normally, they are very famous people or cats because these require less context to understand, and they can be relatable in various cases. For example, this Elon Musk can be used to express your nonchalant, I don't give a fuck attitude. And this meme comes with audio automatically in your head because this is associated with divas like Ariana Grande, even Doja Cat tried to imitate it in her live stream once. Yeah. And you must know these Chinese cats because they are universally used in all kind of POV memes. There is so much more to talk about. But let's move on to stickers in Russian. Russians can also be very sarcastic, so you can use this to express you're so stupid, didn't know that you're good. Also this to trick someone. I understood this immediately at the time I saw this because однажды, когда я была в Нижнем Новгороде, один мужик просто подошел ко мне и шептал «Сосёшь?» Вот только через пять секунд поняла, о чём он. So there can be a lot of accidental coincidences even in one language, which can be funny or interesting. You may say, these things are so vulgar, I don't want to learn. But I mean, you can choose not to use it. Understanding them is a must, in my opinion. In Mongolian, people, especially from Ordos, like to use this sticker to express speechlessness. The origin is said to be Buddhism related. When we see something horrible, we do this. It's kind of like drawing a cross on your chest for Christians. I also remember that a few years ago, one of my friends liked to use k -k -k to express ha ha ha, which was also interesting to me. By learning languages, we bring joy to this world and in the meantime, we make ourselves more susceptible to various types of humor. Language diversity is so fun. 
One thing in this language can mean another thing in another language. And in this fast developing AI era, accent is what makes our identity and differentiates us from AI. The most important thing is to focus. If there is an equation for humor, we might express it as this, where H represents the humor output, E is the exaggeration factor, C captures context shifts creating absurdity, R measures real-life relatability, and S quantifies that crucial surprise element. But humor isn't just a simple weighted sum. Our brains process comedy more like sophisticated neural networks, with multiple interconnected layers transforming raw experiences into laughter. Just as a neural network needs diverse training data to recognize patterns, your humor capacity follows a logarithmic relationship. Notice the crucial multiplication between experience and diversity. This explains why simply living longer isn't enough. It's the richness and variety of those experiences that exponentially increases your humor potential. The logarithmic nature explains why beginners improve quickly, while masters must seek increasingly novel contexts to keep growing. Think about learning a new language. Suddenly, you gain access to an entirely different cultural humor ecosystem with unique references, wordplay, and social norms. Each new context doesn't just add to your humor capacity. It multiplies it by creating countless new connection possibilities in your mental humor network. The best jokes, like the finest French desserts, don't rely on a single note. A master chef doesn't just make something sweet. They balance sweet, sour, and salty while playing with contrasting textures. Similarly, the most sophisticated humor operates across multiple contexts simultaneously, creating those unexpected neural connections that trigger our most powerful laughter responses. Memes aren't just jokes, they're compressed cultural executables that require specific dependencies to run properly. They're the most efficient language humans have ever created, packing entire shared narratives, emotions, and social commentary into a single image. Memes make the conversations on the internet more relatable like in real life. Memes put us in each other's shoes. Every generation has their own package registry. The real skill isn't knowing every reference, it's being willing to run the installer. My parents communicate with me in my language and they use these tacky stickers with their siblings. My mom likes to send this sticker every day before she goes to bed. And this is what my dad likes to send me when I say I miss him. What's the most particular and weird joke you've ever encountered? Or what's the most classic joke that only exists in your language? Tell me in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe and like this video so that I can see you next time.